What's up, everybody, and welcome to the Bears Den Trading Podcast for Sunday, May 1st. This is your host, Medman, and your other host, Grizzly, on the other side. What's up, brother? How you doing? I'm doing great. Just finished a good leg, leg workout. Um, about to go work on my weekly watch list. I might do that live. I haven't decided yet. Awesome. Just looking forward to the upcoming trading week, you know. How's your week been? So far, so good. I'm just, uh, you know, recovering from a little bit of partying over over a weekend there and stuff like that. You know, the usual. <clears throat> uh, <laughs> plenty of vitamins. You plenty need. of vitamins. Yes. And water. 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 Uh, agua. Coffee Lots never hurts. It. Coffee. Some good coffee never hurts, for sure. I do love some good coffee. I, you know, I drink coffee like it's it's probably bad, but I'll drink coffee much like my Italian grandmother before me, uh, all at all hours of the day. Like it doesn't matter. It could be I could be about to go to bed and I'll be sipping on like a cup of coffee and then I'll just go to sleep. It's, it's oh yeah, I I love coffee. I uh, even when I travel, one of my you know I like to find different coffee ch- shops and stuff to check out. You know. Mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. it's kind of like when you travel a lot of people travel for different reasons one of my favorite things is trying new food and trying good coffee you know yes I'm um, wearing two different coffee brands on my head right now I've got my old buddy <laughs> brew hat from where I worked for eight years and then I've got Perk from Savannah Georgia their pen is on the side of my head probably like the best coffee I've ever had by the way if anybody likes coffee that much to travel to savannah georgia for a cup perk p-e-r-c perk is insane insane totally worth it plus I, savannah I like, is, uh, is awesome yeah i love savannah i also like i don't know if you've been to tabby island but it's like right outside of savannah it's on the beach Mm-mm. i love that place for like a getaway um no i've never one of my favorite be- beaches honestly that sounds awesome i didn't even know that as a that existed in Savannah, actually. I just went to like... Yeah, it's not too far from Savannah. Um, I went to a couple of the distilleries and stuff there. I haven't never been to no distilleries in uh, Savannah. But um, it was, it was I just stopped cool. through and eat at some famous restaurants that I cannot remember the name of now for some reason. <laughs> um, I like um I like the the open container in uh, Savannah. You can just like walk around with your drink. Did you know that? That's pretty cool. I've never heard of it. Yeah, yeah. You can actually. I mean, if if nothing's changed, it used to be anyway. You can just like because they have that little walk area where there's like a bunch of bars in a row, so you can just kind of walk around there with a drink and nobody, you know, and it's and it's totally allowed or whatever. Uh, That's pretty neat. But it's a cool town. I like that place a lot. They have um they have some historical hotels that are like cheap but nice. I love it. Yeah. But yeah. Um. So let's see here. I got a little bit of news, right? We've got the uh, just to get some things out of the way. We've got the May mentorship open, and seats are filling up very fast. Yes. Uh, um. I think I think we have like ten seats left. So if anybody wants to catch, you know, get in. Um, I would do it within the week or yeah, ten seats. Yeah, definitely. Uh, those are not going to uh, last long at all. Yeah, um, we've been considering, you know, open up a few more. We haven't decided yet. We'd like to keep it smaller so we can really interact with everyone. You know. Yeah, um, and and truly, it is that way too. If if y'all have never been in one of these mentorships it's not like a like not like a big lecture hall kind of thing like it's it's grizzly gd and brandon literally like conversing with you and you know yeah yeah it, it's it's excellent it's like a we also we got jay Moore teaching more classes this time too so you know bro, people really liked him last time oh my god last time jay Moore was just so he was just eloquent he could like <laughs> fluent and uh and awesome very good class though yeah, he's, he's a very intelligent man he uh he's, he's a good teacher you know 
Uh, yeah, I'm. I'm, I'm I, actually. I mean, I've met him a little bit, but like, I've only talked to him through like my Instagram lives and stuff. But mm. here, seeing his class on there and listening, it he did a I'd really like good to job. Try to get him on the podcast. I think actually, you know, you'd have to. We'll have to talk to him about that. See if he's down. I'm sure he'd be down. Oh yeah. <clears throat> um, um. So, uh, any other? Do we have any other goings on? Let's see. We've got the main mentorship, which is filling up quick, quick. We've also, oh yeah, yesterday we just, um, Grizzly just dropped a new beginner's uh, day trading video, uh, number six now, right? And that's about how to day trade a bear flag. Yes. Um, getting a lot of good feedback on it so far. I don't know if you've looked at the comments yet, but it's doing really well. Um, what was I going to say? Oh, I was going to say, my one-on-ones have been filling up quickly. And if... Uh, people are missing out just reach out to me and i'll try to work in zen because they have been going crazy like i don't i guess a bunch of new traders are coming in or people deciding to invest in themselves i don't know what what's happening but you know if i don't have a spot open that worked for you you can reach out to me and uh we can i can just schedule it manually um but yeah i think that's all the news we have yeah i think so i mean uh, and also those <clears throat> those one-on-ones that was the 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 first one-on-one -on -one I had was with you, Grizz, and uh, the first like real interaction with learning uh, trading from an actual like teacher. So for all y'all out there who are you know trying to get into the market and trying to learn and all that stuff, it literally it's the perfect way to to spend you know what is it a hundred dollars? Uh, no, hundred fifty. Hundred fifty. Uh, spend a hundred and fifty, which is much less than one bad trade, by the way, on uh, setting yourself up for success in the in the market. Moving on, like we uh hundred percent difference. Like it's amazing. Set you straight. Get your get your trading plan in order and all that stuff. Right on. So, um, I think. We should first, before we move on to next week, of course, and these earnings that I'm looking at here, probably take a look at last week and how that went. Well, um, Monday and Tuesday was definitely not my best days. Monday, my internet went out. Thankfully, uh, I was in no trade or anything when it went out. Tuesday was okay. Um, I took a couple losses on two trades this week i'm sorry i took two losses i took um one break even i believe mm. and uh but i did have some big winners and uh one of them i didn't get the call out it was just it happened later in the day and i usually trade and it was on the queues um i seen it fail a big uh, support area and i happened to sit down at my computer when it was failing i was like okay if this retests that i'm gonna take some puts I even messaged uh, Brandon and GD in our little group chat. I'm like, hey, I said, let's short some cues. <laughs> and I, no no sooner I sent that text, I mean, the bottom fell out of it. It was like, oh <laughs> it turned into a nice trade. Probably um, one of my better single trades of the week. Um, what else did I trade? I traded Snow. had a good trade on Snow this week. I believe it was this week. Um, just broke a nice resistance. Um, had a nice gap to fill above that to the next resistance, had decent volume. A day or two before that had a nice run up, kind of consolidated the day before I took this trade in between them two days. Then it had a next move up. Um, but when it had the, when it hit that my price target, there was some big sellers sitting there and it just dropped. Um, but you know, we already made a profit and was out of it. Team mm -hmm. Bull did really well on that trade. Um but yeah, I added to my crypto portfolio yesterday during the dip. Oh um, yeah, same. Uh, yeah, I think uh, if we continue to dip, I'll just keep adding, you know, just like I do regularly. Um, some, when we have these dips, I don't really go crazy. I just add a little more than I would normally. Um, <laughs> I'm hoping when we come out of this into the next bull run, my average is very nice. And maybe I do start taking some profits. You know, I've always said that I'm probably going to hold crypto forever. but 
if I if my average is way down here and we head back into the bull mm-hmm. run, um, I kind of would be crazy not to take some profits, I guess. At least something. I mean, like yeah. But so you can you know you ensure that it's not an all for not kind of deal. Yeah. Uh, it's hard what? to start. You know, once you get into the hundred percent area on like a return, it's hard not to take profits. Yeah. I see. Like I'm like okay, I've doubled my money. Like how much like i know long-term investing you have to have patience and i've been doing it for a long time but 100 percent is just a great return it's hard to Mm -hmm. turn it down sometimes (laughs) and it's real easy to just shave like you know 15 or 20 percent off of that and stick it in your pocket (laughs) yeah that's how i do it trim you know yeah like you remember when we had the the uh podcast with ship survivor oh yeah he was Definitely. talking about they need to be they need to be a good in between between diamond hands and paper hands, you know. Mm-hmm. He said that the person in between is who you want to be, and he has a great point. Water hands, buddy. Um, be like Bruce Lee. Yeah. Water hands. What do you call it? Aluminum <laughs> hands. Aluminum. I, know, <laughs> so. I think he said aluminum. Lava um, hands. So he had a good point. You got to know when to take some of your profit. Um, yeah, that's true. I mean. It's just like, give yourself, give yourself a little, like, pat yourself on the back with like that 10%. Just shave it off real quick and pat yourself on the back, put it in your pocket, and know that you did a good trade and you didn't let it go, go south. Right. Just like keep it as like a little metal that you, that you did a good one. Right. <laughs> if nothing else, um, as a memento, um, there was what I a, really like to do though, if I if possible. Mm-hmm. I'm not trying to cut you off. No, no, but, no, no. Um, that's on. Yeah. It's all good. When I get in these trades, I love when I have a huge return and I can and I can take some profits. And when I do, I take profits and I make that trade of, you know, any I, I take my profits and I, I get my money back for what I put in that trade. So whatever's left in there is just free. Whatever it does is just icing on the cake, you know? It's mm-hmm. free for me. I like to that think, makes sense. It makes me think of the yeah. song Free Ride, you know? Yeah. Because like, that's how I feel like when, you, when you've when you trimmed profits and you're like, oh, well, I paid for that trade. And then you just, oh, but I still have these contracts in my hand right here. What is this? Hmm. Water hands. Ha ha ha. <laughs> it's going to be a thing. Aluminum hands. Something like that. Aluminum hands. That's what I, what I need. Because I definitely have paper <laughs> hands when it comes to day trading. <clears throat> everybody knows that i feel like sometimes my hands like like sure there's there's diamond hands which can be you know a good thing but i feel like my hands are just like zombie hands they're just like dead <laughs> 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 laying there like no nah. um there was a there was one other trade last week that it, is kind of all up in the uh, socials of Team Bull. Oh yes, <laughs> that, uh, that trade by Texas Beck on Amazon. Mm-hmm. His million dollar week or day Jeez. overnight trade, bro. His, I think. Well, let me let me be exact. He <laughs> took the swing trade um, right at close. The next day, he posted his profits. You could see it clear as day. Showed all his positions. He made nine hundred thousand. Wait, nine hundred ninety-six thousand dollars. I mean, I don't know about <laughs> you all, but that would be a very nice uh, day for me. You, know? you wouldn't. You wouldn't uh, hear from Medman for a sec. <laughs> yeah. I don't think. I mean, like at least like a full week while I well, go and let's just say <laughs> that I would definitely reward myself with some sushi that day. Oh yeah, um, I'd reward like a, like the whole restaurant with some or something. I, gee whiz, like how do you spread uh, it around you know, at that point? He's made. I've seen him make more than that in one day. He just, uh, he's just good at trading earnings. Like I don't have the same luck he does. I always like I take his trade with him sometimes, <clears throat> um, and I do make money. But the one seems like the ones I take heavy, the one I lose on. You know, like it's. Yeah. 
I did make some money off Netflix. Uh, what was it? The week before last? Mm-hmm. Um, that was a, a decent trade for me. I took it on my small account. I paid, uh, I think it was $1,500. I p- invested in a call, or I'm sorry, a put option on Netflix. And it went, I, I mean, I think I made like $7,700 on that trade, which is a huge return. But, you know, that was my big, that was by far my biggest uh, earnings lotto winner I've ever had, honestly. Um, well, it seems like he I, um, takes a pretty big position size though, right? Like, yeah, like he, yeah, he does. He gets a lot of money to play with. numbers, but I mean, he also goes in deep. So like for those yeah. who, like. How does he do it? Like that's how. Like obviously, he's taking a big position yeah. too to do this. Like, <laughs> and he um, just don't. You know, when he does it, he don't just do it gambling. He does it. He actually does the research. You know, he'll go in. Yeah, you know, he's a really intelligent guy. He'll go in and do all the uh, look into the companies, look at the reports, and he'll make the best calculated decision possible. Um, he hedges his <laughs> position. So, like mm-hmm. with that, uh, with that Amazon, he had so many puts which you know puts make money on the way down to so many call options so he had more puts than calls but if it did go the other way it would kind of hedge his position it wouldn't be such a big loss for him um Mm. the downfall to that though if that stays flat he loses on both sides um so that's one of the reasons it's such a high risk either way you take it Mm. Um, but anyways did you take any earnings trades uh no not really not anything uh this week in particular except well i do have um i have a debit spread in voo that's set for july um which is interesting because it like it definitely took a dip after i got it um but i think I think it's in a good place, actually, because I mean, debit spreads, you you make money uh, if it just sticks around your your strike. So like kind of um, kind of make money even if it sticks around your strike, like it just kind of appreciates over time. Um, yeah. But I think that. If it if it goes up, you know, enough on that one it's set to be a, a really good return. Um, that's one thing I love about debit spreads is that you can you can really, if you set it up right, you can get high percentages on those things. Um, it's kind of weird how high a percentage you can end up with, but like, yeah, it's, it's pretty cool. I, I would look into debit spreads if you haven't uh, looked into them before. Anybody who's uh, trying to, trade for a little bit cheaper, you know, and, and a little less risk is a very good way to, to hedge your risk and also get into a trade without spending hundreds of dollars. Hmm. And you can I do don't it on have a lot of experience with it. Yeah, I mean, um, I study about it. I'm pretty sure I read mm-hmm. a book on debit and credit spread, but... It's a good way to, like, things test I the waters. I've tried a lot of. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it can bring. It's a good way to test the waters on on some stuff, but also it can bring the the larger stocks down to your level. Like, say I wanted to, you know, trade Amazon. I don't have that kind of money to trade those kind of contracts in any meaningful way. I can do a debit spreads instead, and and you just the premium is the difference between the two contracts instead, and it's a lot less. So yeah, they're pretty cool. They're definitely worth looking into, especially if you're a new trader and trying to hedge risk. Definitely how I kind of got my start. Um, yeah. Uh, but looking forward. So do you have do you have the earnings list? Yes, yes, I do. Yes, I do. I'm kind of curious what earnings we got coming up this week. It is. I know. I know. Cool. I believe a lot of Airbnb stuff. is one of them. Let me see. I think. Um, I think it's on here somewhere. There's so many. Yep, I see it. There it is. We got a lot. There's some bangers. If you had to pick the top five, what would it be? Top five. Um, I'm gonna say AMD. <laughs> Definitely AMD. I, I think. It, I don't know if top five is gonna gonna encase it. But uh, yeah, and AMD is at a crucial point right now. I mean, it's <clears> like. 
it sold off crazy. Like, mm-hmm. um, oh yeah, she was. I wouldn't I mean, be like, surprised if it didn't bounce up. I mean, I'm not saying I'm even going to take any tra- take a trade on it, but I wouldn't be surprised if it. Um, well, also, yeah, you know, I mean, Facebook I Facebook had a huge move up, and it was over. The earnings wasn't good, really, and it was a, uh, but it was just over sold. <clears throat> Well, I mean, if you think about it, right, AMD makes the, makes, you know, there's NVIDIA and then there's AMD. Basically, AMD makes just about half the GPUs out there. GPUs are used for mining coin. Coin is at a dip. AMD is at a dip. I mean, it's kind of like the stars are lining up for a good bounce, right? You know, uh, especially yeah, if, see that. if coins, you know, are essentially on sale. Some people may, you know, be like, hey, now's a good time to start mining or buying um, in swaths. <laughs> I don't know what I, I might play some AMD earnings. Just depends. I, I always just play with our, what, the profits I've made from day trading. That's how I, that I'll put into it. So if I don't, you know, if I don't have enough money from that day profits, I just don't trade earnings. Mm-hmm. Um. um. And then also, uh, and that's Tuesday, by the way. That's AMD is on Tuesday. I'm going to kind of jump around since you asked. Is it after market? Yes, after close. Oh, uh, okay. And then before uh, before market on Tuesday, we have Pfizer, BP, and actually, I think, well, there's Marathon. That's a pretty popular one as well. Yeah, it's true. I know um, it always been. Let's see. And then uh, Tuesday after close, we have Airbnb. <clears throat> Airbnb. <laughs> uh, That'll be an interesting one. I feel like it's oversold as well. Honestly. Airbnb has been, I think, I'm so bullish on that company as a whole. Uh, just because I feel like you're, there, it, you know, they undercut yeah, hotels I love it, you know? by so much. And yet, they're so much better in so many cases because the privacy, everything that you you get, um, the personal touch and all that. I, I just short terms for like Airbnb and stuff like that are, are going to be. They're going to overtake hotels, I think, pretty quick. Let's see. Uh, and then looking back at Monday. Um, I've been hearing this name. Here and there, uh, I think Black Rock. Uh, let's see. Capital Investment Corporation. I've heard their name a few times here and there, so they may be someone to kind of keep an eye on there on Monday before open. Uh, Seems like a ship survivor. Maybe he does some work with them. <clears throat> mm. uh, like he does, his company does some work with them. I'm not for sure. Interesting. Um. And I think that's uh, that was everything for Tuesday. So yeah, Pfizer, BP, Marathon before AMD and Airbnb. Oh, and Starbucks as well after on Tuesday. And then on Wednesday, yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, Starbucks is is always kind of an interesting one. Nobody, I mean, coffee never goes out of style, you know. Uh, before open on Wednesday, we have Moderna. Which would definitely be interesting, especially since Pfizer. Oh, PFE and yeah. Yep, exactly. Um, uh, Generac is that? That's kind of a popular one, actually. Well, is it? I got a question. Does Nvidia have earnings as well? <clears throat> looking, I'm looking. Um, actually, on on Wednesday, one of my favorites. Uh, has earnings, which is Etsy. That's always a interesting one. Oh, and Marathon. Oil. Okay, so we, we got some chips, uh, vaccines. Uh, what else we got? Nvidia. Oil. There are multiple different marathons. I on thought Wednesday. I don't know if Nvidia's already had earnings, but I kind of figured they'd be in the same week as the AMD. Yeah, yeah, I would, I would think the same as well. 
That's interesting. You know, one thing I do remember whenever uh, NVIDIA had earnings, it made AMD move with it when it made a move. Yeah. And the uh, the contract on AMD had less IV than NVIDIA. Huh. So, you know, I'm not you saying anything, that, but you, you might want to keep maybe that, that in mind. Might, that might mirror the other way? I, it could. Um, I'm not saying I'm going to take anything. I'm just saying I did I did see it last time. Yeah, that's interesting to uh, interesting thing to to keep an eye on. Um, I wonder if it's going to be the same way with PFE. Also on Wednesday and after Moderna. after in Moderna, uh, yeah, yeah, that could very well be. Um, and they're on they're at different stages on the boosters and stuff too. I think, right? Like, I have no idea. Uh, yeah. I don't try them very often. Um, also on Wednesday after close, this will be interesting. Um, Uber. Uber's a could be kind of wild on earnings. Uh, yeah, I think Uber, Airbnb. I, I mean, I don't see like um, seem like solid companies, you know, both of them. Like, yeah, it's like they kind of like, remind me of each other in ways. Mm -hmm, definitely, um, it's like a is, weird. Well, I mean, I feel like before, right? So hotels and taxi services those things needed this management system that you couldn't you know they needed dispatch it needed the hotels needed you know books and all that but now you have this computer in your hand that has an app on it that does literally all of that for you so then then where is the dispatch center come into play where does the the hotel's front desk come into play anymore you know what i mean when you can do everything yourself yeah. and at the touch of a button on your phone. Um, yeah, I, I think it's just how, like, sure, there's a place for those other things more formally for business and stuff like that. But as far as the everyday consumer is concerned, I don't know how these things, like, how this can't overtake uh, in a short time, you know? Yeah. Uh, also, <clears throat> some interesting earnings on Thursday before open, we got Shopify and Datadog. A couple pretty popular ones for Shopify would be as well. big earnings. Um, it would be a big deal. I feel like uh, that'll be one of them that a lot of people play. That's probably one of the biggest ones I've seen. AMD, Shopify, Airbnb, um, Moderna. Mm -hmm. I feel like them are the biggest ones that you've named so far, um, as far as you know, earning lottos goes. There's also Crocs on Thursday before open. <laughs> Crocs. That actually, honestly, Crocs could be interesting because recently they've had, a lot of people have been like hopping on the Crocs lately. Um, and they may release some kind of sleeper earnings because uh, I've seen just. Style-wise, everybody has been going bananas for some reason, and I hate them. I hate them. I hate Crocs. <laughs> I, I just I've ever wore a pair. I don't think I ever have put on a Croc, but I mean, they look comfy. I'm not gonna lie; like it's it's like a big pillow of fluff. But uh, anywho, after after close on Thursday, we have Fubo and Lucid. Uh, and Wish, actually, uh, and DoorDash. Wow, good God, this is going to be a big week. It's going to be fun. Um, Wait till you hear Friday. It, it makes it a little difficult to day trade, but, you know, <clears throat> it's all right. The market, the, the day trade market is still here. We you know people are making plenty mm -hmm. of money, but after the earnings is over, I remember last time after earnings were over, it's just like a whole new game, you know? It's just, um, if I'm not mistaken, after earnings last this time last year, you know, some strength started coming into the market. Yeah. Um, don't quote me on that, but it seems like it's around when you know, the stuff started making all-time highs again. I mean, it seems logical, like, right? I mean, yeah. <clears throat> after, after a bit of a lull, a bit of a dip, we get earnings. Earnings looks good. I mean, I don't see why they won't look good for a lot of these companies, honestly. Um, as the world wakes back up from, you know, everything that has been going on, uh, 
yeah, yeah. I mean, I would if agree. I, like, good. Fine. If I do take any earnings out this time, I'm only following Texas Beck and what he does. <laughs> I'm not doing it on my own <laughs> because I don't know why. Like, um, <clears throat> I always pick the wrong one. I just like sports I have betting. To be the worst person at earning lottos and sports bets. Like, <laughs> if you want to win, just take the opposite of what I take, and you'll win. All right, all right. We got one more. We got one more earnings day here, uh, and I. You know, these are this one has definitely been seen in Team Bowl here and there. Um, and that is before open. We've got DraftKings. And I think that's uh there's also, I mean, Goodyear. Um, I would take a just take a quick look at Goodyear just in case so because they're just a big company with a lot of stuff to do. But definitely look at DraftKings, because that is a Team Bowl staple. People have made some bank off of DraftKings in the past. So, yeah, that's a good list, man. Wow. Yeah. It's going to be a good, it's going to be a fun week for sure. Um, It'll be interesting if nothing else, that's for sure. Definitely, uh, well, definitely take- go take a look at those earnings uh, yourself, by the way, people. Uh, there's there's a lot on earnings that I didn't mention that you may be interested too. So go to earnings whispers and uh, have a look at that as well. What were you gonna say? I'm sorry. I don't know. Well, <laughs> <laughs> lost my train of thought. Choo choo. Um, so that's um. Yeah, that's that was so we've got last week in review, some bangers there. We've got some huge earnings coming up next week. Oh, what do you think about the overall, like our our spies and our QQQs and all that stuff for next week? I like we're back down in this area we was in not too long ago, you know. This mm-hmm. it's just hard to predict anything with earnings. Um and honestly, as a day trader, I don't care what it does. I'm going to make money regardless. <clears throat> and as a long-term investor, it's just giving me more opportunity to get my average down. So mm-hmm. I feel like it's a win-win when we have these nice pullbacks, dip, whatever you want to call it. You know, um, mm-hmm. I definitely don't like adding to my long-term during all-time highs. Yep. But we'll see. <laughs> you know, we're we're at some good. We're at a good area to bounce. Yeah, that's what I was thinking, and. Um... I mean, I forgot what I was going to say. Probably wasn't important. <laughs> yeah. well, um, you'll probably remember about time we stopped recording. Yeah, I'll, I'll hit the stop recording button and then a little bell will go off in my brain. Like, ding. Um, so yeah, anywho. Um, next week, we've got... All right, yeah. We've got excellent earnings next week. We've got all kinds of stuff going on. And you said we're... And uh, do you think it's a support zone on these here, QQQ and SPY? I feel like we're definitely in a support. We're in a demand zone. Um, okay. Do we fall through that with bad earnings? We could. Um, you know, earnings week, I've seen weakness in the markets before during earnings week. So it's really hard to get a good picture of what's going on during these times, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, people are always talking about recession or whatever. Uh, you know, sometimes we do go into it. We, I, I have full confidence that we're gonna we'll climb our way back out and come back stronger than ever. As day traders, we'll still be making money day trading. So, um, I don't. I mean, I'm not worried, honestly. Yeah, I mean, economically and stuff. Like, I just, it seems to me, and and maybe I'm biased from where I'm standing or whatever, but it doesn't seem to me like people have stopped spending money or slowed down very much uh, or will anytime soon, especially going into the summer months and stuff like that uh, as usual. I mean, it's just like, sure, there's, there's indications here and there that things are slowing down, but you gotta remember that the driving force behind those things are the people spending the money, right? <laughs> And I have just not seen people slow down spending money from where I'm standing. 
whether it be on yeah, I feel like um, service or products or whatever. Yeah, I feel like a lot of stuff is supply and demand right now. You know what I mean? Like a lot of the dips and mm-hmm. um, like for instance, like the chip shortage with Nvidia and AMD. I believe if we didn't have a chip shortage, they would still be AMD would still be one hundred fifty dollars stock. Nvidia mm-hmm. would still be a three hundred dollars stock. Um, yeah, it's just about supply and demand right now. A lot of it with the war, everything going on. Yeah, um, oil prices going up. That's you know people having to spend more on that inflation. You know people having to spend more on everyday items, stuff like that. But it, it'll become the new normal. And probably ten years from now, what inflation is now, we only could dream about. We only could wish it was. <laughs> yeah. Still. Yeah, so, I can only imagine. You know, we just gotta adapt and overcome. You know, just have to accept things. I'm a firm believer. And not worrying about stuff that you cannot physically change yourself. So I just don't worry about it. I accept no. it. I, try, I find ways to adapt just as I do with day trading, you know? Yeah. I mean, if you're, if you're worrying about something, that worry is just one extra step, you know, you can just, if you just like in your mind, you're like, oh, I could worry here or I could just look for a solution. Just look for a solution. Skip the step about worrying. It's useless anyway. You know, <laughs> if you want to go a step further, um, think of ways that you can benefit from it. You know, find mm-hmm. a problem, fix it, find ways to make money. You know, that you need fill a need. Um, <laughs> there's always opportunity. You just gotta, you just gotta be willing to get it. You know. Yes, 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 absolutely. Um, I mean, it, it, you see it in the market, uh, kind of, you know metaphorically in a sense i guess or or symbolically like you can play the market to the downside you know you you can figure out a way to do that in real life i guarantee it (laughs) there's a there's a metaphor there for for something in real life you just gotta apply it definitely yeah i can see that yeah Um, i mean you know Gets hotter. Invest in air conditioning. <laughs> I don't water. know if it's that simple, but you know. Invest in water. Invest in clean water. Water cleaning. Yeah, I mean, there's this, there's a million bajillion things to to think about in any given circumstance, especially when it comes to the market. Opportunity is everywhere. But yeah, I mean, we've got a good episode here. We went over earnings. We went over uh, some banger trades from last week. Yeah, I'm I'm very satisfied with it. Yeah, just bear in mind that this podcast is not financial advice. Nothing we say is meant to be taken it as a as advisement in any way. We're here to to help you, guide you, and try to teach you to be uh, and entertain you. <laughs> yes, and entertain you. Um, to be a better uh, better trader or to be a trader in the first place or to learn to trade, to start and start putting your money away and uh, building something to come back to uh, later on when you don't want to work anymore. Um, yeah, so this isn't financial advice. This is education. Take notes, practice risk management, all that stuff. Um, if you need a little bit of extra help, check out Grizzly's YouTube. There are multiple playlists on his channel there. A bunch of free. 100% free. Free, free, free. free. F-R to the E-E. Um, and then also there is, uh, what was I going to say? We've got the, oh yeah, we've got one-on-ones. Grizzly's one-on-ones are, uh, amazing. And then also there's the May Mentorship, which has probably now, since we've been speaking, I would guess that it's only got nine, eight, or even seven seats left at this point. Because it was at 10 when we started today. And um, if you watch this podcast to the end, I want you to leave Grizzly in the comments. Everyone that leaves a Grizzly in the comments, I may or I will be doing a giveaway. So. Don't say the reason why, just leave Grizzly in the comments. Nice, yes. All right, cool. I love that. All righty, you heard it. Leave Grizzly in the comments for uh, 
special surprise giveaway, which we'll probably end up, you know, talking about next episode. So see you next Sunday. Be well. And uh, yeah, don't lose your money. Practice risk management, all that stuff.